Right, great. Um, welcome everyone. As I said, today's topic is um, a building a homepage. So, of course, the homepage is your site's main hub and serves as the face of a brand. And your homepage helps site visitors to get to different areas of your site. And it is the place where you should grab the visitor's attention. I think one of the important, thing to, important things to highlight here is that you want to um, take people um, deeper into your site. You want them to delve deeper into your site um, from, from your homepage. So just a few tips to consider um, when you start creating your homepage. Um, number one, keep the design simple and uncluttered. Um, consider easy, easy readability. You don't want to add too many words. And of course, a lot of these tips actually apply to the rest of your website as well. Um, number two, use easy navigation and call to action buttons. Number three, um, ensure high quality images that resonate with your brand and your message. Um, number four, keep accessibility at the top of mind. Remember to add alt text to your images. Number five, also remember to optimize images and media to ensure better loading speed. We don't have time to really get into optimization, but it is important to, um, to do that for, for media. Number six, use attention grabbing headlines. Um, you want to, of course, grab your, the attention um, of, of visitors that land on your, on your homepage. And then seven, instill trust and credibility. You want to show off your achievements. You want to maybe um, highlight client feedback, um, et cetera. And then lastly, um, ensure that your, your homepage or website is mobile friendly because more than half of website traffic um, comes from, from mobile phones. So let's just talk about my plan for today. So number one, I'm going to set a static homepage. Um, number two, um, I'm going to choose between using a page template or the front page template. And for today, I'm actually going to select a page template um, for my homepage. And then I'm going to create a header and footer template part. Or well, I'm going to create a header and footer um, for my homepage. Then I will remove the title block from the relevant template that I'm going to use. And then I will build the page using the block editor and, and patterns. All right, so let's go. Let's jump to my test website. Um, let me just first show you what I'm going to, um, the page I'm going to build today. I haven't, I haven't created my header and footer yet, but let me just show you um, what I am um, going to try and achieve in today's session. So this is my homepage that I'm going to try and build. Um, as I said, using the block editor and using um, patterns. So I've got a um, like a featured image here at the top and I use the cover block here. And here I'm instilling trust um, with, with clients or, um, or folks visiting my website. Um, mentioning up with 10 years experience, um, we've won awards, something about my dedicated team, and of course, um, clear call to actions. And then I've used a media and text block here um, to highlight our services. Then I've also added a query loop block. Um, so I'm not going to have a blog page, but I'm going to add my um, my um, my blog posts to my homepage using the query, lock, query loop block. And then I just have another cover block here for aesthetics. And here I also want to, to highlight um, what I've achieved or what my, my business has achieved. Some contact details. And then a gallery. So this is what we are going to build in the next hour or 50 minutes. Um, and then of course, also my, my header and footer. But let's start at the beginning. And that is of course, which theme am I using? So you will notice here on my dashboard, if we go to appearance themes, um, I've installed the 2023 block theme. And of course, when we use a block theme, um, we have access to the editor where we can um, actually create and edit our site cohesively. So first things first, I am going to set a static homepage. So at the moment, 
Um, let me just show you. If I go to the editor, you will notice that my home page displays my latest posts. So you will notice this is actually the blog home template is actually the default home page set when when I start when I started this new website and I've I've installed the theme. So I actually don't want that. I want to have a static home page. Um, so therefore, we're going to go back to our um, dashboard and we need to go to settings and select reading. Now here you will see your home page displays your latest posts. And that is what we just saw. Um, and as I said, that's the default setting. But I'm going to select a static page for my home page. And I have already created these pages. I've created a, an about page, a contact page, a home page. I've got the privacy policy page. And then I've got a sample page and a services page. So I'm going to select my home page as my static page. You can also then, if you have a blog page, you can um, set that here as well. But for my website, um, I've decided uh, not to have a blog page. As I mentioned, I'm going to add my query loop block to my homepage actually. Um, but yeah, so that's set. Let's save our changes. And now if we go to pages, you will notice that my home page, it says front page next to my home page because that is that is my front page now. That is my home page of my website now. The next question we want to answer is, so what template has been assigned to this page? Now you will notice when I selected um, my home page as a static as my static page, this theme, if I open up my sidebar settings, you will notice next to template, this theme actually assigns this page to the page template, which is the default template. So um, all your pages, your general pages will be assigned to the page template, but now your page template has also been assigned. And what that basically means is that all your pages and your homepage will share the same header and footer. But if you wanted to create a, um, a custom template for your homepage, you can do that. It all depends on your theme and what's available, but um, let's make our way to appearance and then go to the site editor. And let's select templates. Now, I just wanted to show you at the moment, you'll, you'll see here's your, your home page. And if we click on that, it says home at the top. So we are actually in the page now, not the template. And when you are on a page, you won't be able to um, edit your header and footer, right? So let's click on header. It says here at the, the bottom left, edit your template to edit this block. So we can't touch the header and footer here. If you go to edit template on the right in your sidebar settings below, you can say edit template. And now you will see when I edit the template of my homepage, I actually came to the page template because it is assigned to the page template. All right, so just wanted to clarify that. But if we go back to templates, we can now next to templates, click on the plus icon and there it says add new template. So now we can add a new template. And as I said, if I select the front page template, that will now replace the page template for the home page. So if I select front page, you will notice you can choose a pattern or you can skip. And then if you select skip, you will actually get a blank page, a blank template. And then you have to add your header template part, your post content block, your footer template part, etc. Or you can just select a pattern and then open your list view and say, all right, I'm going to remove the query loop block from here. And then you can, for example, set the header, um, set the footer, etc. So let's just save that for a moment. Just wanted to show you, I've, I've, create, I've created this front page template. So now it already assigned itself to the home template. So let's see that. Let's go to pages. You will remember earlier on when I selected the home page, it was assigned to the page template. So let's open our home page. And now you will notice 
it has been assigned to the front page template. And only the home page will be assigned to the front page template. So that is the option, op some of the options that you do have. But for today, I actually just want my home page to also be assigned to the page template as my other main pages, like my about page, um, my services page and contact page. So for today, I'm just gonna go back to the editor. I'm gonna go to templates, select the front page template, and I'm just gonna delete that for now. And now again, if we return to the home page, we will notice it has been assigned to the page template. All right, the next step is we want to um, create a header and footer for our um, page template. So of course, we don't add content to a template. We only add structure to a template. Um, so we will add our, our content here in the home page. But for now, let's go and edit the template. And we can do that here in the in the template editor. So you can go to appearance editor and go to your templates from there, or you can just go here and say, all right, I want to edit this page template. So let's edit template. Now, again, all pages that has been assigned to this template, the page template will have this header and footer that we're going to set now. Okay, so let's open our list view and select our header. Another great thing is um, you can actually just use the, the patterns that come with your, with your theme or with core. So I'm going to click on the three vertical dots and say, I want to replace this header. And of course, to, um, to do this quicker, I'm just going to select one of the patterns, as I, as I mentioned. So let's go ahead and say, all right, I want to select simple header with tagline. Great stuff. And if I open that up, you will notice that we've got our site logo, which I've already added. Let's make that a bit larger. And then in the stack block, we've got the site title. And then the site tagline, I've already set my, my tagline. I said your indoor weather experts. And then my navigation menu um, on the right. So I've already created a navigation menu, as you can see here. If you click on the three um, vertical dots, you'll, you can create new menus. Right, so that was an, an easy step. I've, I've just selected one of my patterns and I actually like what I see here. Maybe I just wanna add some padding around, um, around the content. So let's select this group block and I just wanna add some more, more padding. There we go. All right, so I'm happy with that. Let's move on to our footer. We're going to follow the same process. Select the footer, click on the three vertical dots, say replace footer, and then select one of the, um, the patterns that come with your theme. Now, of course, this might differ. Um, you might have more options depending on what theme you are using. Um, so let's select a, diff a different um, footer pattern. I'm going to select left aligned footer. So let's select that. Right. Um, I actually want to remove my site title. So now we can modify it. So I'm just going to say I want to remove that and say insert before. No, not that one. Let's make sure I select the paragraph. Sorry, let's just go. There we go. Okay, let's make sure we select the, the paragraph there and say add before. So now we know it's part of that stack block. And I also want to add my logo here. Let's make that a bit larger as well. Or maybe a bit smaller. And now of course we can modify we can modify the address. My address is a hundred main street. Cape Town. All right. And then I also wanted to add some padding around this row block. So maybe on the sides a bit more. 
there we go. And now, of course, you also want to add the URLs to your um, to your social media um, platforms. And then, of course, we can um, say, oh, let's select this. You just open my list view, select the navigation. Let's say we want this to be medium, a bit larger. All right, so there is my footer. Maybe we can also make that bold. Let's make that bold and that bold just to, there we go. There is our footer in place, um, ready to go. So now let's update. The one thing that I actually want to do is um, I noticed that sometimes there's too much space between uh, my footer and the content above. So maybe let's just remove some of the padding at the top. So you can actually unlink the padding, select top. And let's say for the top part, we actually want less padding. Cool. Update. Save. And now our template is ready. I've added my header. I've added my footer. Now, the one thing I mentioned earlier on, one of the goals for today is I want to remove the title block. And I'll show you what I mean. Um, so if I go and look at my example again, um, you will notice, sorry, there we go. Um, I can actually update this page now. Um, let's see um, what happens because I've updated the template, right? So let's update this page. Boom. My new header and my new footer. And now if I look at this, I actually want to add some more padding. So let's just select this row block again. There we go. Um, let's add some more, some more padding here. And actually remove that top part and update. Okay, let's just, there we go. That looks a bit better. Um, but now you will notice at the top, it says sample page. And for example, for the home page, um, it will say home for the contacts page, it will say contact. Um, but I actually want to remove this. And to remove that, you need to remove it from your template. So if I return to my template, um, I can select the title block. And now I'm going to say delete the title block. And let's update. And let's see now um, on this page, if I refresh, there we go. The title block has disappeared. Right, so our template is all done, and um, now we can start actually creating our, um, our the rest of our homepage. We can start creating the content for our homepage. So um, to do that, now there's two places where you can actually edit your 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 template, right? Um, so if you go to the editor and you go to pages and I select home, I can actually add the content here in the post content block right here. Content will be here. But as you can see, there's quite a lot of things happening around you. Um, now there is a, an option, if you click on the, the dots here to say distraction free mode, um, which will also, um, declutter things around you and then you can only focus on your content but I would like actually just like to add my content um, in my page um, from the dashboard so I'm going to go to pages select home and start adding my content here okay so let me just drag this 
to this side. Okay, so here is the first section that we want to create. And let me show you how I um, how I did that. Right, so the first the first block I added was a cover block. So let's add a cover block. Um, I saw there was a question about um, sharing the experiment website. Um, I will definitely do that at the end. Um, but yeah, this is just a, a test website. So, but yeah, I will share that at the end. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to add our cover block and I'm going to select an image from my media. You'll notice I've already added all my media that I want to use today. So I'm going to select the image and then if I open up my list view, I will select the cover block. In my block toolbar, I'm going to change the alignment to full width. And also in my block toolbar, I'm going to toggle to full height. Great. And I'm going to open up my styles and I'm going to select a white overlay for my um, for my cover block. I'm gonna have this white overlay and um, I'm gonna change the opacity to 80 so that there's a better contrast between my, um, my background and my text. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to add is I'm going to add a heading and the heading says, air conditioning and heating services. And then I'm going to press enter. We will start modifying and editing our content now, but um, let me just copy in and paste this text to save time. All right, we're going to paste the, the dummy text. I'm going to press enter. And now I'm going to add a call to action. So I'm going to add a buttons block, forward slash buttons. And um, I am going to say, contact us. Now, you will notice I've already set the color for my, for my buttons block. And I just wanted to remind you where I did that. Um, so if I went to editor, to the editor, to the site editor, I went to styles and then I opened up the style book. And this is of course where you can um, modify individual blocks or the display and style of individual blocks. I went to design and I changed the background color here. So the great thing is now I don't have to modify the, the, um, the buttons block every time I add one, it's, it's already done. All right. So, Contact us, and of course, the next thing you want to do is you want to add um, the URL to where you want your contact, um, contact us, call to action, where you want it to go. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all three of these, um, these blocks. I just clicked shift and I held them in. Um, and then I'm going to click there and say, um, oh, I actually don't want to, don't have to do it there. I can just say, all right, I want to stack these three blocks together. But I forgot to add the heading. So I'm going to undo that, select the heading and the buttons block, and then stack them together. Now, at the moment, you will see it's quite narrow. Now, to ensure that it, it spreads across the, the cover block, you need to select the cover block and deselect inner blocks use content width. At the moment, it's using the content width of the cover block. So let's say it says here, nested blocks use content width with options for full and wide width. So if we deselect it, you will notice it, it um, now um, spreads across the, the cover block. All right, so let's select the, um, the stack block now. And in our block toolbar, let's change the justification uh, well, let's justify the items to center. Great. And now I also want to enlarge this and I'm going to select the heading and 
for size, I'm going to set a custom size. I'm going to actually say one rem and let's make it 5.5 and let's also make it bold. Okay, so we're almost there. Let's select our cover block again. I want to actually change the content position to top center. So I will do that here. I select change content position and I want to top middle or top center. Now, when I do that, you'll see, oh no, it's it, it's very close to the border. Um, don't worry about that. We're just gonna add some padding. So again, let's select our cover block, open our sidebar settings, go to styles, scroll down to padding. And now we can add some padding, top, bottom, and left and right. And there we go. Our first section is done. The next section that we want to look at is this one. And here I've actually used a pattern from the patterns directory. All right, so let's select the cover block and I'm gonna say add after. And let's go and search for that pattern. Now you need to go to the WordPress.org website because the pattern is not available um, with my theme. So I will go to download and extend and click on patterns. And this will take you to your patterns directory. Now here you can view um, curated content. So these, um, these, ex um, these patterns have been curated by WordPress.org. Or you can say, I want to see all the patterns um, contributed by the community. So if I select community, you can also scroll through hundreds of, of patterns. Now, what I always do when I like a pattern, I um, click on the little heart and then it gets added to my favorites. So I'm actually going to go to my favorites. Otherwise, it's a bit too difficult finding that pattern. So let's click on favorites. And here you will see all the patterns that I've liked. And I think it's on page three. So let's go to page three of my favorites list. And there is the pattern. So you merely click on copy, return to your website. And I'll say command V on my, my, um, my laptop. You're going to paste it there. Right, and now of course we will start modifying it to make it look the way we want. So the first thing, um, at the moment the image is not displaying, that's fine, I'm gonna click on replace, open media library, and then select one of the images that I've already um, added. Great. I'm also going to open my settings and say, I actually want this image to be a square. You can make it smaller, right? And now we can start modifying the color and the text. So I'm gonna say we have 10 years experience. Yeah, I wanna say we make your house a home. The other thing I wanna do is I wanna change the letter case, so you change the letter case so that it's not all capital letters. Right, so we make your house a home. You will notice that the they've already added a radius around the buttons block. But if we open the sidebar settings, we can go to radius and border. If you click on the three vertical dots, you can say reset all. And now it will be reset. Um, and now what I want to start doing, and of course, now you can modify the content um, to meet your to meet your needs. So for now, let's start changing the color. So you'll notice I've used this blue. So um, I'll change that to blue and the rest of the text I'm going to change to to black. And the buttons block, of course, I want the the background to be blue as well. The other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to reset the size of 
you'll see the font size of my buttons block. So reset that so that it's the same as the other buttons blocks. And on this side, they've added a duotone to give it that green effect. So let's also change the shadow color to blue. Same for that one. Change the shadow color to the blue. And of course, the other text I said is going to be black. Okay. The next we want to the next thing we want to do is we want to add some padding to to make our um, the section breathe more. So again, we need to make sure we select the the parent block. So um, let's select this this group block. Go to styles. No, we actually want to select the columns block here. There we go. Select the columns block and say we want to add some padding around. The other thing we want to do is we want to add some padding, um, some block spacing between the columns. So when we go to block spacing, you'll notice if you select the one here at the bottom, the, the, the middle block spacing, we can say, oh, we want to add some, some block spacing there as well. Okay, so let's see what that looks like now. There we go. The one thing I want to do is I just want to select this columns block. All right, that's great. Let's say this image. Let's align the center. All right, so there is our next section completed. And as you saw, I used a pattern. I then added a new image and I just modified some of the content and I updated the colors um, and I've added some padding and block spacing. All right, so the first part and the second part, and here you can see that blue color that I'm playing around with that goes with my, um, my brand, um, et cetera. Okay, let's move on to the next example. And yeah, I've actually used a media and text block to achieve this. So again, let's open our list view, make sure we select the, the, the main parent block and say add after. And I'm gonna say forward slash. Um, if I start typing in media, you'll see media and text comes up. And the media and text blocks allows you to put text next to an image basically. All right, so let's just select this block and say we also want this to be full width and then add an image from our media library. There we go. And now on the right, we can start, start adding our, our content. Now to save time as well, let's just copy, let's just copy this and say um, copy blocks. All right, and you will notice this is a, a heading. Um, and of course, I, as, as I mentioned earlier on, I'm showcasing all the services that we provide. And then I just added some, some dummy text here. I'm going to press enter. And then of course, we can add a buttons block and let's say learn, learn more. The other thing I wanted to remind you is um, to add alt text for um, accessibility to add alt text to your to your images all right so um i've added my content now of course you also wanted to add, add your url where you want this call to action where you want it to go so let's select our media and text block open our styles and let's also add some padding three all right the one thing i did want to change is i actually wanted the the image to be on the right so in your block toolbar you will notice you can select show media on left or show media on right and i'm going to say i want to show media um, on right 
great stuff. So that section is also is also complete. And now let's move on to my blog posts. Now, as I mentioned, I'm not going to have a blog page. So the good thing about this is that um, when I add my when I display my blog posts on my homepage, and um, there will be fresh content um, on my homepage, which will also hopefully be good for um, SEO. So let me show you how I did this. Okay, let's select our media and text block, say add after. Now I'm gonna group all of that together. So let's say I'm gonna first add a group block. I'll select a, a single container. Also change that to full width. And then the first thing I wanted to add was um, a heading. And the heading said, what's new question mark. And let's also make that bold. And then I'll press enter. And the great thing is here in your list view, you will see now it is part of that container. Now I'm going to add my query loop block. Now, for those folks who are not familiar with the query loop block, the query loop block is basically a block that displays your, your blog posts. All right. And I am going to choose a pattern. It says choose a pattern for the query loop or start blank. I'm going to choose a pattern because the, the work has already, already been done for me. So let's choose a pattern that I like. Okay, I actually want this one, the grid. Okay, and then let's make this wide width. I don't want this to be full width. And let's open up our list view to see all our blocks. Now for our title block, let's make that black, black as well. So for the text we want black and for the links we want black. And the same thing for, for the excerpt. Let's make that black as well. Although this section won't display on the, um, on the front. This is only on the back end. All right, the one thing I do want to add is I wanna add a post featured image block um, for, for my, blog, uh, my blog posts, as you will see here. So just a reminder for those who are wondering where do these images come from? So when I created my, my blog posts, let me just go to my posts. Here are the three posts that I've created. So let's open my one post. I've added some dummy content. And here at the bottom right, um, below featured image, I added a featured image for this post, right? So when I add my query loop block, it pulls in the image from here. Okay, so I've got my title, my the title for my blog, my um, my blog post, and I'm going to say add after, and then I'm going to say forward slash post featured image. Right, and we're going to add the post featured image. Now, the great thing about the query loop block is you only have to update one of the items it will then automatically be an update will update everywhere else so when we add our post featured image you will notice it's been added everywhere else and here you can actually remove blocks add blocks you can add the um, post author block if you want folks to see who wrote this this post etc all right um let's also select my um my heading here and let's make that center there we go cool there are my there are my 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 newest posts now you can actually say you only want to see three posts at a time on your on your home page and then the newest posts will will basically um appear. And as mentioned, that's good for SEO as you have fresh content um, on your homepage. 
oh, the one thing that I wanted to, to mention, sometimes you might see, oh, but it's not appearing on the front end. Well, just remember, um, sorry, so it might not appear on the front end. So if you select your query loop block, you need to deselect inherit query from template. It says here toggle to use the global query context that is set with the current template. So we don't want to use the global query. We want to deselect this. We want to use the query that we set. Um, so yeah, if you ever have trouble not not seeing your um, not seeing your your posts on the front end. Remember to deselect that. All right. Let's move on to our next section. And as I mentioned, this is also something more aesthetic. And you will see this parallax effect, which looks really nice. Let me show you how you can quickly do that. All right. So again, add after. We are going to use the cover block for this as well. And we are going to select one of our images. Here's the image that I've already added. Now, make sure you select the cover block, the, the, the parent block. And then again, we are going to say we want this to be full width. We want to toggle it to full height. And um, now we can start changing the opacity as well. So select your um your cover block i want the opacity open styles i want the opacity to be a bit lighter so let's make it 40 and now we can start adding our content so i'm going to say we bring comfort to your home let's change the text to white and the size, I want it to be large as well. So I'm going to say 5.5 rem. And again, now you will see it's not um, stretching across your cover block. So remember, select your cover block and deselect inner blocks use content width. I don't want it to use the content width. There we go. It crosses. Now it will... Um, yeah, as I say, appear across my, my cover block. The one thing I still want to do is I want this to be lower down. So I'm going to change the content position of the text. Now, again, there's not enough, not, not, not enough um, breathing room. So we're going to add some padding, of course. So open our styles and add some padding around Let's see how that looks. Great. The last step is to add that parallax effect. So again, make sure you select your cover block. And not below stars, but below settings, you will see media settings and you will see the option to have a fixed background. So let's select a fixed background. And now we will see that parallax effect because the image is fixed. There we go. And now it scrolls across the image or over the image. Awesome. All thanks to the, the cover block. All right. Let's see what's next. We have three more examples that we want to create. So. The next section is um, showing off what we have achieved, the number of installations or repairs for aircons, for heating and happy customers. So the way to do this, we're going to use two different column, column blocks. All right, so let's do the first part. Say insert after. Okay, so the first part is just a single columns block. So we can add a columns block and say we want one column. Select the parent block, make it full width. 
and then select the column that you want to add the content to. So we're going to add um, a heading and it says numbers speak for themselves. I'm going to press enter. Let's just copy this text. All right, again, I'm going to select both of these. I'm going to hold in shift and then click with my mouse. And let's stack them together as well. And let's change the um, justification to center. And let's also make this bold. And then we can select this column block and say we want to add some padding, some more space. And let's add some padding. There we go. So that section is done. So let's select the main columns block. Say so add after. And now we want to add the numbers. And this time we're going to add the columns block with three equal columns. Select the parent block, the main block, say full width. Then change the background color of your of your columns block. So open styles, background. We want it to be blue. And now we're going to do all our work in the, the one column, and then we're just going to duplicate to save ourselves um, the time. So let's just add a paragraph here and say it was 170 repairs and installations for Acons. And then copy, and we are going to say a condition, installations, and repairs. And we're going to stack them together again. So I'm going to select both of them or highlight both of them and stack them in a stack block. And also change the justification to center. And I want to change the text to white. And this number, I also want to um, enlarge. So I'll go to size and set a custom size. Again, I'm going to select ring and say 5.5. Great. So now that's done. So now we can select that left column, the first column, click on the three vertical dots and say duplicate and duplicate again. And then we can just delete. I'll just select that and say delete, delete the empty columns. And now we can update these. So it was 119. So this was um, heating installations and this was 390. Happy customers, right? And now if we select the, the main columns block, we can add some padding as well. And then I think we're good to go. There we go. So numbers speak for themselves and um, the one thing you could still do, one thing that I see here, if you select your um, your stack block, you can actually decrease some of the, the block spacing. So maybe let's do that and see if that helps. So let's make that zero. Yeah, that looks better. Select the stack block. Now, of course, I could have done that at the start. And then I would have only had to do it once. So let's make the block spacing. Yeah, there we go. So now there's less space between the two paragraphs. Awesome. So yeah, that's what we created using two different columns blocks. Next up is our um, contact, um, contact info. And yeah, I'm also gonna actually use a columns block with two equal columns. So Let's just select this columns block and say add after. And we're gonna add another columns block. And this time columns block with an equal split. 
Again, select the main parent block and say full width. And on the left-hand side, we're gonna add an image block. Um, and we'll select one from our media library. And then on the right, we can add content. So let's just grab this text. So you will notice if I if I just copy and paste it, it doesn't actually keep the style. So now I want to style it a bit. Um, I'm going to change the text color to like a gray. And then let's make it a bit darker, like a custom dark gray. Awesome. And then let's say we want this to be extra large. Let's press enter. I'm going to add a separator, a separator um, block. And below that, I'm going to type in contact. And I want to keep that small, but I want to add some, some space between the letters. So when you select the, the paragraph and you go to typography, you'll see there's an option, letter spacing. And I just want to add a bit of space between the letters. So I'm going to say five pixels or letter spacing, and then press enter. And then we can add our, I'll just copy, copy the, the address, the number and the email address. And this is large, that's actually the size I wanted. And you can see there's a nice contrast between the extra large, the small and the large. The one thing you can also do is you'll notice I've selected, let me just open my list view. I've selected the right column. You can also actually send that to the middle to align it to middle. Let me just do that here. Let's align it to middle. And then we can add some more padding. So let's add some padding at the top and bottom. Oops, left and right. The other thing I want to do is I wanted to add some block spacing between the two columns. So again, here, um, when I select left, right, let's just add some padding there as well. And Bob's your uncle. So there are our contact um, details. And you'll notice here, our experienced technicians are dedicated to providing top quality service and products. Um, and of course, the last thing that I wanted to add was a gallery. So let's go ahead and do that. Add after forward slash gallery. And then you can just select the amount of images you want in your gallery. In my case, I want six images. So one, um, two, three, four, five, six, and say create new gallery, insert gallery. Of course, select your gallery and say you want it to be full width. Now, if you open your, we want to add some padding now. If you add styles, you will notice you don't see padding, but it's just hidden away. So if you click on the plus icon next to dimensions, you'll be able to select padding and margin. So let's select padding and let's also add some padding around our gallery. And you'll notice every time I'm, I'm selecting three because I want that um, uniformity on my homepage. And there we go. Our homepage, let me just go to the top. Our home page is done. Of course, we used a cover block for this example. We used the pattern for this example, but you can see it is actually a columns block as well. And here's a media and text block. Here's our query loop block. And you'll notice it's a bit more narrow. So I actually didn't use full width. I used um, wide width for this one. And then we've got this parallax effect that we um, selected for our cover block. And then our two 
columns blocks. This was a single column, three equal columns, and another columns block with the equal split, and then six images we've added to our um, to our gallery. Now, of course, we've already created our template, so we've added our header and our footer. The last thing we want to do is just check um, how it displays on, on mobile. So let me just update this. Right, so our homepage is done. Let's view the page on the front end. There we go. There you can see our header and our footer. And you can see all our content. Um, and I've tried to implement those things that I've I've chatted about um, at the start. Um, I try to instill trust. I try to keep it simple, uncluttered. Um, of course, I mentioned, remember to add alt text to images. And I've kept the the calls to the call to actions simple. Um, and I've tried to use um, attention grabbing headlines, et cetera. All right, so let's click. I'm gonna right click and say inspect. So let's just see what it looks like on mobile. So there we go. Let me just pull this down a bit. There we go. So this is what my site looks like on mobile. So yeah, very happy with that as well. And that brings us to the end of today's session. So um, I am going to stop the recording now. Um, so for those folks who, who watch the recording, thank you for joining us today. And then for those who are in the session, I will find out if there are any questions. So we'll see each other next time. Thank you.